Hello, I'm Phoenix Fire Department EMS Deputy Chief Mark Faulkner. The appropriate pre-hospital intervention for victims of serious head injuries can be critical to the patient's outcome. On March 25, 2010, Phoenix Fire Department Captain Paramedic Ernie Lazarga suffered severe head trauma when an impaired driver literally ran him over and several other motorcyclists that were stopped at an intersection. Four of the other motorcyclists were killed. Ernie survived thanks to the professional care he was provided on scene. I suffered a serious traumatic brain injury, TBI, and several other critical injuries, including several bones in my skull. My right tibia was replaced with titanium. I also suffered 13 broken ribs, broken clavicle, scapula, broken T9 and T10. I was in a coma for six weeks. I almost died. Traumatic brain injury claims the lives of thousands of victims every year in Arizona, and many more TBI victims live on needing assistance. Thanks to the appropriate pre-hospital care of Phoenix paramedics, Captain Lazarga survived. The Phoenix Fire Department supports the efforts of the Excellence in Pre-Hospital Injury Care Project. This unique collaboration between EMS agencies, the University of Arizona, and the Arizona Department of Health Services will clearly result in positive outcomes for patients suffering traumatic brain injuries. Hello, my name is Dr. Ben Bobro, and I'm here today to talk to you about the major public health problem of traumatic brain injury, or TBI, and the enormous potential that EMS providers have now to save lives. Last year in Arizona, nearly 7,000 people, many of them children and young adults, suffered a severe brain injury. Historically, there was very little that EMS providers could do to impact the outcome of patients who had severe traumatic brain injury. But all that has now changed. We now understand that the first few minutes after brain injury are critical, and the treatment rendered within the first few minutes determines the outcome. We believe that the pre-hospital care for traumatic brain injury as we understand for cardiac arrest, is crucial if we are to save lives from traumatic brain injury. This gives EMS providers tremendous opportunity and tremendous responsibility. The EPIC project is designed to improve outcomes from serious traumatic brain injury by translating some extremely important concepts into everyday practice. The aim of the EPIC project is to thoroughly implement and measure the impact on patients of the latest nationally vetted TBI guidelines. The essence of the national pre-hospital TBI guidelines really boils down to maintaining constant blood flow and oxygen delivery to the brain. Things like blood loss from hemorrhage, low oxygenation due to airway problems, and brain swelling can make maintaining constant blood flow after TBI challenging. There are three things that control how much oxygen the injured brain actually receives. These tools are systemic hypoxia, which you can change with high flow oxygen administration, systemic blood pressure, which you can alter with rapid IV fluid administration, and cerebral vasoconstriction, which you can alter by changing end tidal CO2 via your ventilation. Together, these three factors are powerful tools by which you can dramatically change the outcome from a TBI if you manage them properly. If not managed properly, hypotension, hypoxia, and hyperventilation kill nerve cells and they kill people. To explain them simply, we coined the term the H-bomb. Hypoxia is very common. In fact, hypoxia occurs in more than half of all severe TBI cases. A single episode of pre-hospital hypoxia, which means an O2 sat less than 90%, is associated with a doubling of mortality in TBI. Next is hypotension. A single episode of hypotension also doubles mortality in TBI. And if there are repeat episodes of hypotension, the mortality rate skyrockets 800%. And the worst problem is hyperventilation, ventilating both too fast and too much. Hyperventilation is associated with at least a doubling of mortality and likely is much worse. And the worst thing about hyperventilation is that it happens automatically unless we manage it very, very carefully. Nearly all of us will hyperventilate TBI victims unless we are incredibly focused on keeping end tidal CO2 between 35 and 45. 
The only way to prevent hyperventilation is to use specific strategies and tools to keep our ventilation rate and volume where we need it, which is one breath every six seconds, with each breath lasting about a second. You know, Bruce, that's critical information. Let's take a look at our patient care scenarios to see just how important it is. O2 is on. Let me go ahead and check pupils. Pupils are pearl. What I want to do next is pre-oxygenate the patient. It is critical we maintain good blood flow and oxygenation to the brain at all times. Immediately place all TBI victims, even if they don't look sick, on a non-rebreather O2 face mask. It is important to pre-oxygenate all TBI victims in case they get worse and require an airway intervention. The O2 sat should be at least 90% if the patient is breathing on its own. If he's not breathing on its own, despite the non-rebreather mask, we need to assist ventilations at 10 breaths per minute for adults, 20 breaths per minute for kids, or 25 breaths per minute for infants up to age 2. It is critical that we do not ventilate too fast, too much, or too strong. If you hyperventilate a brain-injured patient even briefly, it can have very serious results. Second OV with the blood set, normal saline set, start gets on the patient. The guidelines don't say which drugs you should use, but you have to really be careful of any drugs that can lower your blood pressure. For example, morphine, fentanyl, or Versed. The BVM we're using here helps control ventilation. This BVM actually prevents us from giving too much volume. These tools can definitely help regulate ventilation, but even if you don't have any of these gadgets, you can still deliver the right amount of ventilation by using a person on the team designated as the ventilation spotter to make sure they breathe exactly one breath every six seconds, which is 10 breaths per minute for adults. The breath should last about one second and you can't over squeeze the bag. Think of the Ambu bag as a brain and you don't want to squeeze the brain too hard. I'll go ahead and prepare to intubate. If you would, I'll go ahead and have you hold the mask there. Got Thank it. you. TBI guidelines don't dictate who we should intubate. Instead, that decision is made off the paramedic's knowledge, his experience, the distance to the trauma facility, as well as how sick that TBI patient presents. The goal is to keep the end tidal CO2 as close to 40 as possible and always between 35 and 45. Also, this is the proper end tidal CO2 waveform we want. You don't want the waveform too tall and narrow. Ideally, you would place the patient on a ventilator at a rate of 7 cc's per kilo to prevent lung trauma and at a rate of 10 breaths per minute. Even on the ventilator, continue to closely monitor the end tidal CO2 until you get to the trauma center. This prevents vasoconstriction of the cerebral blood vessels and any secondary brain insult. It is not true that hyperventilation will relieve swelling in a TBI patient. Hyperventilation is strictly contraindicated. It can be really challenging to slow down the ventilations, especially in a stressful situation. That takes a lot of training and meticulous attention on our part. Now that we've taken a look at how we should be caring for adults with TBI, let's see how the EPIC project goals apply to a pediatric TBI patient. Our vital signs right now is our blood pressure is uh, 89 over 40. Her pulse rate is 130. Respirations are 12. Place the patient on a non-rebreather mask and high flow O2 to get her O2 sats higher. Okay, that's good. Her sats are starting to come up to 94% now. Try to place a peripheral IV line. If unsuccessful, and it's part of your protocols, place an IO line in the tibia to get this patient fluids. Keep the systolic blood pressure at least 82, which is 70 plus 2 times the patient's age. 
give a 20 cc per kilogram bolus of IV normal saline, which for this patient is 500 milliliters. Recheck the patient's blood pressure as soon as the bolus is in. And the glucose is at 88. 88, okay, good. I think we should go ahead and intubate her. The crew prepares to place an endotracheal tube. After placement, the crew will verify using end tidal CO2 and breath sounds. Keep her end tidal CO2 as close as possible to 40. Start with a ventilation rate of 20 because of her age. For kids 2 to 14, we should start with a ventilation rate of 20 and monitor end tidal CO2 with a target of 40, same as in adults. Okay guys, let's ventilate her approximately 20 times a minute, one every three seconds. We're at 40 right now. For the complete set of EPIC TBI protocols and full description of the Arizona EPIC project, please visit www.epic.arizona.edu. We're truly grateful for your participation in the EPIC project. Thank you.